This process of vernalization is actually what most plants do to make sure they don't flower until spring. So the strategy is that you, you germinate, you being a plant, you make a floral break or a floral press, you block flowering, and then you slowly but surely switch that off over winter, and then you keep it off epigenetically silenced to, in order to flower in the spring. So this was a classic epigenetic process that no one really knew the molecules involved. So for vernalization, you can give a plant five weeks of cold, you can take a leaf and make a cutting and regenerate a new plant, and that will have remembered that it's had, that it's, uh, you know, ancestor from many generations ago has been vernalized. So it's very stable through mitosis. That then is a classic epigenetic phenomena. So you can imagine there's a whole zoo of proteins required to make a flower, but you keep those off by this particular protein, this FLC protein, which is a transcriptional repressor. And then what you do is you slowly but surely switch off expression of the repressor. So if you take away the repressor, you relieve the repression and then you can actually uh, flower. So what vernalization does is slowly but surely switch off FLC and then keep it epigenetically silent in the off state to allow other promoted pathways to come along and allow the plant to flower. If you take an Arabidopsis, for example, from Germany, which might only need four weeks cold, versus northern Sweden, which needs 12 weeks cold. It's not that there are different or extra modifications in the northern Sweden one. It's just that the speed of the whole process is different. So the process is the same, it's that the dynamics seem to be different. And that's what adaptation or evolution has then slowly but surely changed the, the timing or the speed of this process and then allowed adaptation to these very different winters.